Take your Bibles and turn with us to Psalm 120. Psalm 120. Psalm 120. While you're turning there, you know there are, I know all of you have seen what's been going on in Israel. And what we've seen has been catastrophic. It's been terrible. It's been unbelievable. Folks, that's on the surface. But how many of us have looked beneath the surface? Because that's, there's some things there that we need to see, we need to understand. And that's what I'm going to be talking about today. The title of my message is Looking Beneath the Surface. I want you to look with me at Psalm 120. And the Bible says, In my distress I cried unto the Lord, and he heard me. Deliver my soul, O Lord, from lying lips and from a deceitful tongue. What shall be given unto thee, or what shall be done unto thee, thou false tongue? Sharp arrows of the mighty with coals of juniper. Woe is me that I sojourn in Meshach, that I dwell in the tents of Kedar. My soul hath long dwelt with him that hateth peace. I'm for peace, but when I speak, they are for war. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, God, we preach this message with a heavy heart. God, there's things we need to understand. God, things we need to see. Father, I pray today that, God, you'll give me the liberty and give me the power, Lord, and the ability, Father, to point to some things beneath the surface of these terrible things that we're seeing happen. I pray, Father, God, you'll open our eyes Pray, Father, if there be one here that knows you not as Lord and Savior, God, today will be the day that they'll receive Christ. Pray, Lord, that we as Christians, that, God, we might, Lord, draw nigh to thee and realize, Father, that, God, truly we are living in the last minutes of the last days. It's time for us to awake from sleep. God, to stand with thee. Father, you have your way. Glorify thy son. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. As you read this psalm, you can't help but notice the parallel between this psalm and what's been going on in Israel. Folks, as you look at the history, and by the way, I would I would suggest that every one of you read a book called From Time Immemorial. It is so eye-opening. I hope you'll read that book. But as we look at the history, as we look, beloved, at the evidence, as we look at the actions of Israel, we have to say, beloved, Israel desires peace with the Palestinians. They desire peace. The very fact, beloved, that they uprooted, listen, their own people and gave Gaza over to the Palestinians says they want peace. They didn't have to do that. They want peace. But, but tell me, beloved, what has the Palestinians given for peace? What have they given? Oh, they talk about peace. They say, give us the, 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 the uh, West Bank and we'll have peace. Folks, that's what they said before they gave them Gaza. That's what they said. Listen, Israel wants peace. They'd be crazy not to. They're surrounded by Muslim countries. They want peace, but they don't want peace at any price. They don't want it, beloved, if it means their destruction. Would you? Would you? 
And that's what, beloved, would happen if they gave up the West Bank. Biden, that's what would happen if they gave up the West Bank. That's what would happen. Listen, Israel gave the Muslims control of the Temple Mount, the most holy site in all, all of Judaism. They gave, it, they gave control of that place up, beloved, to the, to the Muslims for peace, for peace. Israel gave them Gaza for peace. What has the Palestinians given? More violence, more, more death, more destruction. By the Palestinians, y'all know who I'm talking about. The psalmist says, I am for peace. But when I speak, they want war. They want war. And that, and that is, beloved, that's it in a nutshell. Hamas, Hamas, which governs Gaza, the Palestinian Authority, which leads those in the West Bank, beloved, doesn't want peace. The, the, the Muslim Brotherhood doesn't want peace. They they want the destruction of Israel. And so does Iran, which is behind all of this. And, and, and Qatar and Syria, beloved. And Hezbollah in Lebanon. And, 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 and the Houthis in Yemen. And they've shown that over and over and over again. How many times do they have to prove it to us before we as a nation are going to accept that? How many times? Amar showed it again on October the 7th when they, beloved, fired thousands of missiles on Jewish citizens. On citizens. Beloved, when, when about 2,000 of them invaded Israel towns and villages and killed innocent men old men and old women and, 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 and women and children. It was horrific. It was unbelievable, beloved, what they did. Does that sound like they want peace? Does that sound like? But as I look at what happened, there are some things, beloved, that I see beneath the surface some truths that we should recognize, uh, beloved, that are beneath the surface of all the, 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 the murders and the, the violence and the pain and, and the suffering and the death that we see when we look at the news. And it's those things that I want to talk to you about this morning. Some great truths. And the first great truth is this, folks. What happened on October the 7th in Israel should remind us, if we look beneath it, should tell us that Satan is revealed. Satan is revealed. You know, in our enlightened age, our learned age, we have been taught, beloved, by the so-called wise men that belief in a supernatural evil power is prehistoric nonsense. We've been taught, beloved, that it's, it, it, it's how ancient superstitious people explain bad things. They tell us, beloved, it has no place among modern educated people. They tell us there is no Satan. There is no, no devil. It's just superstition. Hey, they even tell us there is no God. They even tell us there is no right or wrong, no, no black or white, that everything is relative, they tell us. Folks, that's not what God says. And you know what? That's not what common sense says. Amen? Listen, listen. God says that we, beloved, the righteous, wrestle not against flesh and blood. 
but against principalities and powers and rulers of darkness and high places. In other words, there is a spiritual realm, beloved, that's inhabited by evil, wicked, spiritual beings. Beings, beloved, with great power. They hate God. They hate God's people. They hate righteousness. They hate that which is good. They hate it. And it's headed up by Satan, by the devil. Who is Satan? Isaiah chapter 14 and Ezekiel 28 tells us who he is. Beloved, he is Lucifer, the anointed cherub the one who stood, beloved, before the throne of God, the highest of the angels who ruled, who rebelled against God and led a third of the angels in revolt and they were cast out of heaven. It's him, beloved, who appeared as a serpent to Adam and Eve and caused them, beloved, to fall. It's him, uh, beloved, now called Satan, who brought sin and death and sickness and sorrow into this world. It's him. It's him. It's him who has fought against God and God's people over the centuries. This book is full, beloved, of attempts by the devil to destroy Israel, to destroy the church. him and his henchmen who fight against God today. Can you see him? Can you see him beneath the surface of all this mess that we're seeing? He's called Satan, the devil, Beelzebub, the old servant, the wicked one, beloved. That's just a few of the names he's called in the Bible. Jesus said of him, talking to the Pharisees in John chapter 8, verse 44, he said to them, you are, uh, you are of your father, the devil, and the lust of your fathers ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning uh, and abode not in truth because there is no truth in him. And then, beloved, he went on to say, he, Satan, is a liar and the father of it. Amen. Did you get that? Jesus said, Here's a, he's a murderer. He's the father of lies. He's the father of all those who follow his way. And who follows him? All those who reject Christ as the Pharisees did. All those, beloved, who do evil as the Pharisees did. All those who lie, beloved, as the Pharisees lied. They are, beloved, of their father, the devil. And I want you to know something. And I say this with a broken heart. Everybody in this house has got a spiritual father. It's either God through Christ or, beloved, it's the devil. Is Satan. Is Satan. Somebody says, oh, but preacher, don't you know that my professor says there is no devil? That's, that's a superstition. Then he is a liar and a follower of Satan. But maybe you don't believe God. Maybe you don't. Maybe, beloved, you don't believe in the devil at all. Then, beloved, look at what happened to Israel. Look. Look, look what happened on October the 7th. Thousands, thousands, beloved, of, of, of uh, 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 terrorists came across and murdered in Something's going on with this thing, Leonard. Hey, so 
thousands of rockets, fell on residential homes, beloved. Listen, they've been fired to kill. They've been fired to maim, to destroy. They came from Gaza. They, and now they're coming from Lebanon and Syria and from Yemen. They, they can't, beloved, uh, uh, they, they can't, uh, they're not firing at Israel's military. They're firing at women and children. At women and children. Old people. On October the 7th, 2000, Hamas fighters, beloved, uh, uh, went out from Gaza. Why? To fight against Israel's army? No. No. They went out to murder old people and women and children and even babies. Even babies. I can't understand that evil. I can't understand that. But I see what's underneath it. And it's the devil. It's Satan. They shot those folks in cold blood. They, they beheaded babies and burned mothers and children, tied them together and burnt them alive. Alive. They raped young girls in front of their parents and then murdered them, killed them. They killed 1,400 Jewish citizens. And they paraded the bodies through Gaza with the crowd. Yay, yay, wow, yay, Allah is great. They murdered and tortured with no concern, even beloved for defenseless old people and children. And they carried over 200 hostages into Gaza. No, we look, beloved, at, at, at this, this carnage and evil that took place and it sickens us and it breaks our heart. But, beloved, it also reminds us that Satan is real. He's real. And what's happened since? Hamas, Hamas has hid behind their own people. Their own people. They, they want Israel, beloved, to bomb their own people so they can say, oh, look how evil Israel is. They have no honor. They have no honor. All they care about, beloved, is destroying Israel. God's people. They send their charter. They send their charter. They're controlled by the evil one. They're controlled by Satan. And when Israel, beloved, tries to, 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 to spare these civilians that they're hiding behind by, by telling them, beloved, to, to, to move south or, or by pinpoint. Uh, bombing strikes, what does Hamas do? They fire a rocket and it hits, beloved, their own people. A parking lot beside a hospital and they say Israel bombed a hospital and 500 were dead. That's not what the evidence says. I've seen it. I've seen the film, beloved. I've seen it. I've heard the conversation between two Hamas people. They bombed their own people. And blamed, tried, blamed it on Israel. And they spread their lies, beloved, to the lying media. And beloved, it has been broadcast all over the world. And Satan's followers, beloved, have picked it up and run with it. Run with it. Demonstrations the world over, and I'm so sorry to say, in America too. 
U.S. officials go out and repeat the lies, beloved. Harvard, Yale, and these Ivy League schools, beloved students, go out and, 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 and protest against Israel for the Palestinians. Hamas. Hamas. And no matter, beloved, how much evidence you have, they won't believe it. They will not believe it. They'd rather believe the lies. The lies. Folks, all of this, listen to me, is demonic. It's demonic. It's satanic. Murder, uh, uh, destruction, pain, lies, evil. Don't you see? Don't you see? Satan, beloved, was a murderer from the beginning. He is the father of lies. He is the devil, the destroyer. Look at what happened. Look at it. Don't you see? Don't you see beneath it all, beneath the surface, Satan, Satan, look at it. Look at his handiwork and tell me he is not real. And then tell me this. Who are you following? Who are you following? Beloved, who are you believing? Is it Christ or is it Satan? Is it Christ or... Because listen... Beloved, you're believing and following one or the other. Amen. And if you're here and you're not saved, you haven't received Christ, I got news for you. You're following the wrong one. Jesus said, if you're not with me, you're against me. You're against me. Another great truth, another great thing that we see beneath the surface is that the Savior was right. The Savior was right. We, we see that, beloved, Satan is real, and we see that the Savior was right. Turn with me to the book of Luke. Luke chapter 19. Luke chapter 19. Luke chapter 19. In Luke chapter 19, beloved folks, Jesus had just made his triumphal entry uh, down the Mount of Olives. And the people cheered. They cheered and they read, put uh, palm leaves in front of him and, and, and they shouted, Hosanna in the highest. But when Jesus saw Jerusalem, beloved Jesus began to weep. He began to weep over the city. Why did he weep? He wept because he knew, listen, that in a few days they were going to reject him. They were going to take him and drive spikes into his hands and his feet and hang him from a cross. And he looked at that city and he wept not for, what, what for himself, but he wept, beloved, for them. And he said this in Luke 19, verse 42, listen. Say, if thou hast known, he's talking to the city, if thou hast known, even thou, at least in this thy day, the things which belong unto thy peace, but now they are hid from thee. Now what did that mean? What did that mean? Folks, the prince of peace had come to them. He, beloved, uh, the promised Messiah, he was there in their midst. He had revealed himself to them uh, as uh, their long-awaited king. And all they had to do was receive him and believe, beloved, an everlasting peace would be theirs. Would be theirs. But they didn't believe in him. And he knew they would reject him and they would kill him. Jesus knew that by rejecting him, now get this, by rejecting him, they would not 
find peace. They would never find peace. They would desire it. They would long for it. But peace would elude them. Was Jesus right? Was he right? In AD 70, Titus the Roman came with his Roman legions and destroyed the temple. I mean pride, beloved, one stone off another until it was completely demolished. And he killed multitudes, multitudes of Jews. Women were weeping and crying. Men were being nailed to trees, beloved, crucified. Multitudes were made slaves. See, no no peace for Israel. No peace for Israel. Jesus prophesied this, by the way, in verse 43 and 44 of this this chapter. Then there was the Bar Kokhba rebellion. About about, uh, uh, AD 132 is when this started or when it arose. This time, beloved, the emperor of Rome, Hadrian, went with his with six full legions and auxiliaries that were already in the land, and he put down, beloved, this revolt of, of, of the Jews. Hadrian, beloved, ordered the deportation of all the Jews all over the world, all over the Roman Empire. They were, were carried and spread. There was no Jews in the land of the Jews. He even renamed the land. So that the memory of Israel would be forgotten. He renamed the land from Israel to beloved Palestina or Palestine. after the Philistines who were ancient enemies of Rome. During the next 1900 years, Jews would know no peace, beloved, for in every land they were hated and they were hounded and they were driven off and they were, they were, uh, they're, 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 they were killed and their property confiscated. In 1492, Spain, beloved, drew, threw them all out of the country. But the worst was yet to come. The hatred and the persecution, beloved, that happened next reached new heights because in Germany from 1933 to 1945, the Holocaust took place. Six million men, women, children were killed. They were shot. They were gassed. They were worked and starved to death. You've seen the pictures. Oh, but after World War II, after World War II, 1948, Israel became a nation again. Just as God had said in His Word, they became a nation again. Now, now they would have peace in their own country. No, no. Beloved, from from the moment they declared uh, themselves a nation, five Arab nations, beloved, came against them with their armies. Here Israel was brand new and they came, beloved. But by a miracle of God, they won. Israel won. Did peace come then? following beloved was the war of 1956 then beloved there was the six day war in 1967 and after that was the war of attrition from 67 to 70 and then there was beloved on October the 6th 1973 the Yom Yom Kippur war began and all these And all through these years, Israel, beloved, was plagued with terrorist attacks, 
bombs, blowing up buses, killing Israelites. Then on October the 7th of this year, you already know what happened. On this very day today, Israel is at war with Hamas. She's being bombed by Hezbollah in the, in the north, Syria, beloved, in the northeast, and Yemen in the south, and from the West Bank. Iran, beloved, is, is massing troops and weapons on Israel's northern border as we speak. What did Jesus say? Peace will be hid from thee. Peace will be hid. Because you rejected. He was right, folks. He was right. This terrible thing that, 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 oh, that overcame, beloved, uh, uh, that, we've been beh uh, that we have beheld tells us, beloved, the Savior was right. He was right. Israel will have no peace until the Prince of Peace is received by them. They will have. So if the Lord was right about this, I want you to use your brain a little. If the Lord was right about this, is he not right when he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Oh, you are right, Jesus. You are right. Is he not right when he said, beloved, he that believeth on me is not condemned but he that believeth not is condemned already. Is he not right when he says, in my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you that where I am there ye may be also. Oh, excuse me. And if I go away, I will, uh, if I go away, I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am, there ye may be also. Amen. You're right, Jesus. You are right. You are right. Tell me, do you believe what the Savior has said? Do you believe it? Do you believe, beloved, that without him, you will die and spend eternity in hell. That's what he tells us. That's what he tells us. I pray you do. Because we see again, beloved, that all he says is right. He's right. Somebody says, preacher, I see, I see beneath the surface. And I see that Satan is real. And I see that the Savior is right. But how will, how will this war end? How will it end? Turn in your Bibles with me. I can promise you this. Turn in your Bibles. Turn to Jeremiah chapter 31. Jeremiah chapter 31. I want you to listen to what God says. Jeremiah chapter 31. We're going to begin reading with verse 35. Listen to this. Thirty-one, verse 35. Thus saith the Lord, which giveth the sun for a light by day, and the ordinances of the moon and of the stars for a light by night, which divideth the sea when the waters thereof roar. The Lord of hosts is his name. Now listen to verse 36. If these ordinances depart from before me, saith the Lord, then the seed of Israel also shall cease from being a nation before me forever. You know what God's saying here? As long as there's the sun and the moon and the stars, Israel will be a nation. Folks, 
Israel will not lose. She will not be destroyed, not by Hamas, not by Hezbollah, not by Iran, not even by the Antichrist. She will not be destroyed. As I look at this war in Israel, I look beneath the surface and I see that Satan's real. I see the Savior right I see that the scripture is absolutely reliable reliable folks as we see these things who are you following Christ or Satan there's just two just two have you received Christ as your Lord as, as, you, as you see these things, do you understand that Jesus is always right? Always right, Christian. And let me tell you something. This same Jesus who said they will have no peace, this same Jesus says, hey, I will come in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump. The dead in Christ shall rise. We that are alive and remain will be caught up to meet him in the clouds. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Amen. Are you ready to meet him? Amen. He's always right. Amen. He is always, always right. And the word of God says, that beloved, one of these days, after that rapture, this world is going to enter seven years like she's never seen before. And what we see, and I'm probably messing up another sermon here, but what we see happening in Israel is a foretaste of what's going to happen all over the world. If you're left behind when the Lord comes for his church. Amen. It's a foretaste of, of the tribulation. Just a little foretaste. It's going to be everywhere. All over the world. God forbid you be left behind. Amen. If you don't know him as Lord and Savior, hey, you get saved now. Amen. I'm begging you, get saved. And if you are saved, Christian, work for him. Serve him. Look for him. Expect him any minute, any time. I want you to stand with your heads bowed and eyes closed. If you're here today and you're not saved, you come and receive him right now. Christian, you let God lead you as we give this invitation. Look beneath the surface and see these things. Heavenly Father, we ask you to have your way in every heart. God, as we put this service into thy hands, may thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Every head bowed, every eye closed, we invite you to come.